Hey guys, welcome to episode 5 of The Whole Shot. I recently competed at a race called the Bootlegger down in Sequatchie, Tennessee. It's put on by this racing series up here called Sear Racing. Um, and I took my bloop, bloop, Beta 200 that I bought not too long ago specifically to do this kind of stuff. So in this episode, I'm going to talk a little bit about the race itself. I'm going to talk about my impressions of this series. And I'm also going to talk about how I thought that Beta 200 did it at this race and how I think it's going to do the rest of this year. So if that's the kind of thing you like, don't forget, like the video and comment. Let's talk about it. All right, so I'm only going to show kind of some bits and pieces of this race. Um, but, but before I get into that, I just want to talk about this Beta 200 a little bit. So I bought this thing at the end of last year kind of specifically to start doing some of the stuff because I knew I wanted to start doing some hard enduro races. Um, and the reason for that is just because these things are just freaking hard, man. I mean, it's like I remember back when I first started doing cross-country racing where I couldn't even finish a lap. And, and you know, now cross-country races, while I still like them, you know, it's just like you race the same tracks year after year for the most part. You're not doing anything challenging. Really all you're trying to do is build up your speed. And this just kind of takes me back to when I first started. And I think it's super, super challenging. Um, if you haven't done one of these, you got to give it a shot because I know it looks painful especially when you watch me but it's man it's just it feels so good to get through this stuff and improve so yeah you should give it a shot so this beta 200 like i said i bought it at the end of last year it's mostly stock right now um, the only things i've done to it i added a little bit of protection so like um, a skid plate the rotor guard chain guard i put a moose in the front and tubeless in the rear um, because i just that's the combination I like right now. I haven't had a lot a lot of luck with tubeless in the front. Um, I geared it down a little bit. I went down a tooth on the front sprocket. Um, the only other thing I think I've really done is I put an FMF gnarly on it because I busted the shit out of it at the first Sear race, uh, the stock exhaust. Um, and I also, I went down leaner on the pilot. I leaned out the jetting, um, which I thought at the time was good. I thought the bike was running clean. I thought it felt stronger, and I'll talk about that a little bit later, but that's about all I've done to this bike so far. Um, so, so we'll go through a few of these different sections of the, of the race. You know, this bike did really well. I don't think there's anything at this course that this bike couldn't do, especially with the better rider. Um, you know, all the mistakes I made in this thing were purely rider error. I killed it a lot. I'm still getting used to not having a recluse on my bike and, and just doing that constant clutch work. Um, I didn't keep the revs high enough in spots where I should have been revving it higher. You can't ride this thing lazy um, like, like my 254 stroke or a 300. You, you really have to be in the right rev range, and it requires a lot of clutch work. Um, I also was trying to be much more careful in this race because, like I said, I just beat the piss out of this bike at the first race. Um, not only did I bust up the exhaust, but I smashed one of my fork tubes to the point where it wouldn't even hold a seal I had to replace basically a five hour fork tube um, from KYB because I smashed it up so bad. So for some reason um, I felt like I really struggled with the torque on the bottom end of the bike at this race. Um, you know I didn't really notice it at the last race and, and the only changes I really made was that I changed the jetting, I leaned it out, I went lower on the pilot, and I felt like the bike was running super crisp, super clean, um, but but I felt like at this race, like I just wasn't, I wasn't getting traction. Um, I was hitting the power band maybe earlier than it was before, and it was slipping more. I just felt like I didn't have that pull, and so maybe it, it, it I don't know if it was the, the jetting. Um, the other differences were I ran this race um, in the sunny map so these bikes most of the newer betas have this map switch so you can run in sunny mode or rainy mode the first race i ran in uh, rainy mode this one i was in sunny mode maybe that had something to do with it maybe it was also the pipe because i smashed up that gnarly or the stock pipe in the first race and now i'm running this gnarly pipe so i gotta play around with it a little bit um, for the next race i'm making more changes um, I'm going to put an RK Tech head on, really fatten up the jetting. I'm going to try to get that kind of that bottom end torque back because I, I didn't feel like it was a problem before. And it wasn't really a problem at this one either. Um, as long as you kept the revs up, you, you feathered the clutch properly, which I didn't really do. I'm still getting used to 
riding this bike and I've just been using a recluse for so long you know I got to get back into the habit of using a clutch and so maybe that's part of it too because not only was I net not feathering it appropriately and keeping the revs up um, but I was just killing this bike constantly and you'll see that in some of these clips I'm just constantly killing it I don't know if it's if it's that or if I got something tuned wrong with the bike but that was a problem for me um, these races let me just talk a little bit about this series so a buddy of mine dusty kind of turned me on to this hard and hard enduro series um you know even before i knew about this it's like i liked going out to like west virginia to hatfield mccoy and trying to do some of that really gnarly single track because it's just challenging you know me and my friends we've been racing these cross-country races for for years now and while i still enjoy doing those things you know it's just they're just not they're not as hard as they used to be when you first started you know there's nothing super challenging it's kind of the same courses year after year and really all you can do now is just try to get faster and faster you know it's not like like when i first started doing cross country i couldn't even finish a lap sometimes especially if it was a mud race um, and that's these are kind of these make me feel kind of like i felt back then like this is just so hard um, and i'm not you know i'm not fooling myself that I'm going to compete with any of these guys. I'm just trying to finish it. And an but another cool thing about this series is these guys are freaking fast. They are all very good. You know, like 95% of the guys that show up to these seer races are just so good. You know, I, I used to feel like I was kind of above average going to a cross country race because even though I'm not super fast, I, I still felt like I finished better than at least half, half the class or half the field, right? because um, a lot of those guys are, are beginners or they don't race very often or whatever. Um, but here, these guys are just all so good. Um, and so it's, it's actually, it's nice, you know, to kind of try to ride in that sort of level. Hopefully, I think it's going to make me better. But these guys are really, really good. So I did, I did a lot of waiting at this race for a couple reasons. One is just because I've let my endurance slide over this whole COVID thing we've got going on. Um, and so I had to take a few breaks. And then the other thing was just, there were a lot of bottlenecks. This was the second one. I actually skipped the first one because uh, it was embarrassing. I ended up looping out on the first stupid hill, just like I was talking about the cross country races, right? Um, but the, we got through that one pretty quick. This one, I didn't show anything before this, but man, I, I probably spent 45 minutes just trying to be patient and wait in this line to get up this hill. And none of these things are really super difficult. If you were out here by yourself and just riding, you wouldn't spend this much time on it. But you throw 150 guys out here, um, and these things get bottlenecked. They, you know, they take up the lines maybe you were going to take. I mean, that's part of the that's part of the challenge of it is getting through all this. You know, and I'm still not yet to the point where I can just take these crazy different lines like some of these guys do and so I generally am waiting around for kind of the good line and that just wastes a whole whole lot of time you know so one other thing I noticed about this series um, is that there's just some really good sportsmanship here you can see in this clip right here of us going up this hill you know there are there are guys helping out other guys and girls um, all throughout this race, I'm helping people, people are helping me, um, and they're friendly, you know, it's it's really just a great group of guys. Um, they're helpful, even on like the Facebook group, everyone is extremely helpful and informative, you know, it's not, there's not a lot of um, infighting like you might see in some other groups, so it's, it's really been a nice community to be involved with, um, you know, these past couple months.
So I was pretty happy. Um, I at least got one lap done at this. Um, you know, I, I kind of did one lap at the COVID Crusher, but it didn't really count because it took me so much longer. Um, I think I was an hour past when the race ended. They bumped this one up to three and a half hours instead of three hours. But I, I quit after a couple, like two and a half hours, I think, because I twisted my back. And I didn't want to aggravate it too bad. You know, I'm getting older. And so I thought I'd quit while I was still having fun. Um, but one thing I found is, I mean, th th these are these are strenuous, much more strenuous than like a cross country. You know, the first race, I didn't really eat much for breakfast. I didn't really take anything out on the trail. Um, and I just lost all energy after a couple of hours. And so this one, I kind of learned my lesson. I forced myself to eat in the morning, even though I don't normally do that. And I took a couple granola bars with me so i you know a couple times when i had to rest to catch my breath i'd eat something and and that did wonders for um, being able to continue riding you can see there i'm just killing this stupid bike i don't know what the deal is i'm just constantly killing it terrible amateur clutch work or what but everything was run so well um all the splits the scoring you know it was just everything was so smooth so they do um, we got some more races coming up they they have a couple different formats uh, for different races this year which is I think is cool and like I said it's just interesting it's nice to do something different than just cross-country races um, the next one coming up is the night race I think they start at like six or something like that and then the race goes off into the night so you need your your headlight your helmet light so I, I'm trying to get prepared for that one it's coming up in May um, got some stuff ordered but haven't haven't tested anything out or got it set up um, and then later on in the year they're doing a GPS race so you need a GPS to follow the well the course isn't laid out you got to use the GPS to follow the course so just cool stuff right stuff that's um, just different and, and fun There was a bit of a bottleneck right here too and it was it was kind of tricky because you kind of had to go up and then cut back right to get up over the hill and there was some water running down through here um, but when i first came up there were quite a few guys stuck these guys up here i think pulling people through yeah, I go again. I completely forgot until I was watching this just now. So I did add, I added a little bit more protection. I had a clutch guard um, and a statter side guard that I put on from Enduro Hog because I scratched him up a little bit at the last race. And in this race, man, I managed to smash my brake pedal. Like I twisted it in and shoved it into the, um, to the case guard. And it was to the point where every time I hit the brake, it would just stick down and I, I couldn't go unless I reached down and pulled the lever up. Uh, so I had to stop. I had to pull over and twist that thing back into shape. So that was all the, the, the damage I took at this race. I had to replace the brake lever or the brake pedal. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, I forgot all about that. I'm going to try cranking the idle up a little bit for the next round. I think I had it at around 1600, 1700, something like that. I'm going to try to bump it up. And I don't know what the deal is. Maybe I should work on my clutch a little bit there, my clutch hand. So that's it. Um, try to get some video of the, um, the next race, the night race. Ah, wrong way. But uh, yeah, like I said before, if you haven't done one of these, you should at least come out and try one. I mean, they're fun. Um, you know, there's there's no harm in trying something new. You'll you'll definitely pass me, so you got that going for you.